Welcome back, my name's Adrian, and today I thought it'd be interesting if we talk about what it's like using WordPress in your React Native project. Now, it's probably something that a lot of people would be adverse to doing simply because it's um, it's not something you want to do. You don't want to mix WordPress with React. You'd normally want to build your own backend or you'd have a custom backend specifically designed to pull APIs directly into your app. But obviously that's not always the case. Some businesses do have WordPress websites. So I think it's a good idea to know how you can actually import things like your news, your posts, and even how to make customized API posts uh, in WordPress so that you can pull all that data directly into your React project. Whether it's on React or React Native, I don't think it really matters. The same principles apply. But in this case, we're going to have a look at how you can do that in React Native. In the last couple of videos, we've been working on a project called Bush Firefront. Now, there is an actual website behind this in Australia called Bush Firefront. So I thought I would show you how we can pull different posts from that website and show them on our application in Android. And also maybe how we can make some custom APIs in WordPress and how we can also pull those into the React application. So if you're very interested in React development, if you like programming in general, stay tuned, click subscribe because it lets me know what kind of content you guys like and let's get started. So if you didn't know, WordPress released REST APIs back in 2016 when its version 4.7 came out. That's quite a long time ago. Since then, it's been developed as part of their core installation. And whenever you access the path WP forward slash V2, you get access to all those APIs. They're also in JSON format, so they're very easy to implement into your project, doesn't matter what you're running, because JavaScript loves JSON objects. So we'll take a look at that, as well as what it's like making your own API objects through the hooks that WordPress provides on creating more REST API endpoints. I think that's very useful because a lot of times WordPress has been customized by organizations to have custom post types. A lot of those aren't covered by the API model that WordPress provides. We'll have a look at also how to do get and post requests and how to pass data to and from WordPress so we can pull out exactly the kind of data that we want. So if you didn't know already, I live in Australia and we have a lot of bushfires happening right now. This is our local bushfire website, which I also made. It has all the most relevant information about bushfires in WA, as well as news about what's happening. We're going to have a look if we can pull some of this news out as JSON objects and put this into our application so that people can have a look at it on the go. So to get started, I would first say that we need to install an application that allows us to pull REST APIs. Something that I normally like using is a package called Axios. This package makes pulling API data very easy. Let's have a look at installing it right now and how we can embed it into our store. If we jump in here, we have a store that we created earlier in MobX. Let's import Axios in here. To get Axios up and running, we'll need to create a base URL. This will be the URL for our API. In this case, it'll be the website, which is here, and the path wp-json. We'll use these then in our class to set the API as a variable to use later. We'll call API equals axios.create and we'll pass in the base URL. Now, anytime we want to call the API in the future, we just call this.api. So you might have seen this error. This is when you're resetting the store on MobX. It's happening because we're doing hot reloading or hot refreshing. So to stop that, we're just going to check if a store has been set. If it hasn't, then we're going to set it. Otherwise, we'll do nothing. That should fix the error from now on. Now that we have Axios up and running, let's create an observable array called news. Let's make this empty for now. Next, we'll want to create an action called get latest news. That's pretty simple for anyone to understand. We'll create an asynchronous function, which will be an arrow function. And what we'll do is we'll use the API here to call the latest news from the WordPress website. To do this, we're going to run this.api.get. We're going to pass in WP, then we're going to pass in V2 and posts. This will pull all the posts from WordPress. 
we're going to set this against a variable called news and we're going to wait for it to arrive using asynchronous functions. Then we're going to console.log news. To see this, we're going to have to enable debugging tools. We do this by hitting control M and selecting debug. This will open up a Chrome tab. And if we open up the console by hitting F12 and going to console, we'll select the option debugging worker. Here we can run window.store.get latest news. This will run our MobX store and it'll pull back our data, which is here as an array. And if we open it up, we can see all the latest posts are here with all the information from WordPress. Now that we know this data is coming in, let's pull it out by calling it then and deconstructing it and pulling out the data variable. Let's pass that back in. Now let's just call this straight into this.news, which will be set in our store. Now that we know this is coming in, we can go to our have you seen a bushfire component and start displaying it immediately. In an earlier video, we passed in our store into our component here. That means we can access it via its props. Let's pull it out here by deconstructing it by calling this.props.store and passing in the news variable here. This is now an array. So let's see if the length is passed through and we can see if it's updated when we call the function. Right now it's zero, which it should be because we haven't called the function yet. Let's open up the debugging tools and let's run window.store.getLatestNews. What this will do is it'll go to the store, it'll run the function and pull the data in. This will then be set against the observable news item and then this will be passed in here, which will update the length. We can see now this was set to 10, which means that it's pulled in 10 news items from the feed. We can now have a look at displaying those results in our application. But of course, sometimes it's annoying to constantly pull that information in every single time you reload or refresh. So let's see if we can keep that information within the application every single time we reload. We can use asynchronous storage to do that. Essentially, once we pull in the information, we can asynchronously store it into the background and then pull it out every single time the application is reloaded or refreshed. Asynchronous storage was recently depreciated by React Native. It's now being managed by the React Native community team, which is here. In order to use this package, we're gonna to have to first install it by running yarn add react native community forward slash async storage. Let's do that now. Let's import it into our application. Let's copy this import and put it here at the top of our file. And let's have a look at the syntax in order to store and read data, which is here. So we'll create a function to store the data in our store. Here it is. And we'll actually run this in our get latest news section. We'll call the storage key news and we'll pass this.news in. For anything on asynchronous storage, it'll have to be a string. So let's stringify this first by running json.stringify and passing the value. Let's fix up the errors here and this should be all good now. Next, we want to have a look at getting the data every time the application loads. Here's the script for that. Let's paste this into our application and we'll call this get news. We'll check if this value is not null, which means that it's never been set before. If it has been set, we'll run this.news and we'll run json.parse and we'll pass the value we just received and put it into our .news observable. Finally, let's give this a better name and run it every single time the store has been set. Let's call it init store data and let's call a constructor here which will run every single time our store has been initiated. We'll run this.initData. We'll run this.initStoreData, which should pull it out of asynchronous data and set it into this.news variable, which will be updated in our have you seen a bushfire component. Now that everything's set up, let's see if this works. We'll run window.store.getLatestNews and we'll pull the data in. This data should automatically be assigned to asynchronous storage so that every single time we reload afterwards, it should be pulled in. While that's loading in the background, let's now refresh our application. That seems to be working. Let's also refresh our application and see if that data is there, which it is. 
Mobex handles everything as proxies and maps, so that's why we're not seeing the attributes show up until we click on them. Finally, let's see if we can display this information in our application. Let's run news, which will map to a news item. And let's put a view in here. In here, we'll add a text component and we'll pull out the news item dot title dot rendered. We might also put the excerpt in there. Let's have a look what the variable is for that. There we go. Beautiful. If we run this, we might also want to put a key up here. The key would be best as an ID. News item ID. Great. Here we have all the information displayed. Let's turn this into a scroll view. And let's make sure that's introduced up here above in React Native. So now if we have a look, we have all our news items with all our descriptions. We have some HTML in there, but we can have a look at how to remove that in a future video, as well as how to make the styling for these components a lot better. I hope this video has given you a good idea of how to implement WordPress into your React projects. If you want more information about it, please leave some comments below. And if you did like this video and want more like it, please subscribe. Because as I always say, it really lets me know what kind of content you guys want. Thank you.